everybody. Today I would like to share with you in this video how I'm performing a market on this beautiful two-stem Yamadori that I collected with my dear friends in Slovenia in March 2012. Having done a successful market on another Prunus Marlep I collected with them last year, which you can by the way see on my blog if you're interested, I would like to share this market with you on video so you can see how I do it. As you can see, this is a beautiful two-stem old Yamadori. But the best section of this tree is the one with this beautiful shari running from top to bottom. The only problem was, after it was collected and was planted in a pot by me, this pot in my garden, only this section of the tree made new buds and new branches. So I was afraid for this section. And after a half a year waiting, I decided to cut it off because there was no sign of life. I was just preparing to cut it off with a big hand saw when I saw two little tiny buds on this section and here. So I was as happy as a child and waited to perform to cut it off. And as you can see, they developed over the last five years perfectly and healthy, which is amazing because there's hardly any lifeline here. But still, they are really vital and grow steadily. So, I decided that I wanted to make a literati from this section with these beautiful roots over here. Just like the one you see from Japan, which they perform on prunuses as well. But this section is too valuable and too nice to just cut off and throw away to make a shari section over here or a jin section. So what I will try to do is to perform another market over here, which I will share with you in this video. I selected the biggest section of this and put a wire over here as an indication for myself where to make the first cut. I will remove a section of about 4 cm from here. I will put moss, wet moss around it and some hormone powder to promote the new roots. Then I would cover it over the plastic bag, put it tightly closed and leave some holes in it so I can put water in there if necessary if it gets too dry inside because it has to be moist for roots to develop. So from now on I will perform the making the mark cut and I will explain to you how I will go on doing it. Excuse me for the poor English, but it's really hard to talk in the camera. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And well, let's go ahead. So I spread out all the tools and all the stuff that I need to perform this technique. I'm going to show them to you one by one. This is, is a baby iron saw which I'm going to use to make a cut into the bark. This is much easier and safer to do than do it with a sharp knife. It's hard to make a straight line with a sharp knife and it's dangerous as well. This leaves really clean cuts and works perfectly an old chisel to remove the bark, really easy and really important to have one of those. This is an old potato peel knife which I'm going to use to remove the cambium layer and the plum layer. This layer is really important to remove because it transports all the hormones that are made by the leaves to the roots. If you leave this layer on there and not scrape it away, there will be no good result because hormones will continue to go up and downward and there is no necessity to make new roots for the plant so this is important to scrape away the plume layer. Underneath the plume layer is a seal layer that basically turns into sapwood and is not touched when you perform this technique. 
this video no this little cutter is for the wires which I'm going to use to attach the sparkling moss that covers the wound and a piece of industrial plastic to cover it this is trans transmit light through it so the roots can grow very easy and it's strong enough to make little holes in it so you can water when it's necessary to water down the sparkling moss when it gets too dry in the summer so, and last but not least the tape to attach the plastic to the tree trunk so now I'm gonna start marking down the area that I want to cut away so with a little piece of wire as you can see here I measured out the angle and the height the place where I want the top cutting of the mark cut. Now I know this exactly with this marker I'm gonna make a line just above or below this piece of wire to make it easier to make the cut. where I want the bottom cutting to be and the part in between these lines will be removed and that will be the bar cut this stuff is also really important for the success of your air layering this is hormone powder especially for mark cuts and for little cuttings. You can buy this in every garden center. So I'm gonna make a paste with this, just a little water, and then I'm gonna mix it together until there's a thick paste, and I will apply this to the top cutting of the mark cut to promote roots. This helps enormously. It's so really important to get this. So the bark layer is removed now, as you can see all around. Now I'm going to scrape away the flown layer.
uh, this is the paste that I made with a little water and the rooting powder. I'm going to apply it with an old toothbrush. In this case, it's a toothbrush of my mother-in-law, but she won't mind if I don't tell. Well, that uh, concludes the market. Now it's uh, hoping and praying that it uh, will go just as well as the last time that I performed it. And as soon as the roots will show, 
I will show it to you. So, fingers crossed. And now I uh, will let the tree be. I will make some little holes in it later so I can water if necessary, but only if it's not moist enough anymore. So you don't want to get it soaking wet because otherwise the wood will not grow. So. So this is the soil that I prepared for the cutting or the mark cut to live in after it is separated from the original tree. This is old soil, soil that I saved from repotting other trees and that's a shame to just throw away. It is mixed uh, for drainage in normal potting garden center soil so that the tree will have some nourishment because the original Akadama, Bims and Kiru is really poor and has no nourishment in it. So this is the stuff that's going to be put in after the separation. This is the pot that I prepared. These pots can be bought everywhere. I drilled some extra holes in there for good drainage and I prepared, prepared this mesh to fit exactly above this so that the soil won't flush away when I water it thoroughly. I drilled some holes in the sides for the wires that will be attached to the tree so it can be steady in the ground because it has not much roots. When it is separated from the tree it will be really unstable so it can be attached to the sides of the pot. So now we are gonna separate it from the original tree. As you can see there are plenty new roots to be seen underneath the plastic. The first thing I'm going to do now is to cut off a little a piece of the rim of the pot so that I can reach in with my saw to cut off the marcotte from the original mother plant. So that's what I'm going to do first now. The piece of plastic you see on top, the black plastic, was there to keep out the direct sunlight because it was very hot for a month last month. So that will be removed as well now. So that's what I'm going to do now. So this is some sort of tourniquet that I prepared from wire. This will be put around the trunk, around this height, and tightened. And then these loops will be used to anchor wires to the rim of the pot. So the tree will be really secured in its future home. So simple, but really effective. So first thing before sewing off, the marcot is to remove this wire that was holding on the plastic around the marcot um, because I don't want to ruin my perfectly new good sole. So that's what I'm going to do, and then it's sewing.
as you can see, the marker is off now. And now it's going to be planted in the spot. I'm going to walk backwards now and then you can see the new ones are here. As you can see, a lot of healthy roots. There are not many roots on the back side of the tree, but that is probably because that is a dead section of the tree. So let's hope and pray that it will be enough and that it will survive. So here they are, now both close together again, but separated. And let's hope that this tree will survive because it's a very promising one with a nice movement in it. And it's a nice deadwood and shower on it as well. And the other one, as you can see, is already really, really promising. So I will water it now very thoroughly and then it will be left alone and cared for with a lot of love and attention. So, until next time, bye bye. Hi everybody, these are the last few shots of this video about the air layering of my prunus. Well, as you can see, it's doing really, really fine and I'm as happy as can be. It shows no ill effects of the separation of the mother plant and it's doing just fine. I'm sorry to show it to you in this awkward spot, but I don't want to move it around in my tiny garden and having to risk its health. So I hope that this is enough for you to see that the tree is doing really fine. I really hope that you are now convinced that this technique is doable for everybody and maybe you will perform it in the future. Uh, this is the end of this video. I will make some new ones pretty soon. I hope you enjoyed it and I enjoy your hobby. Keep them small. Bye bye from Holland.